Let's begin this morning with U.S. officials that are telling CBS News that a major Iranian attack aimed at military targets in Israel could happen as soon as today. It could involve more than 100 drones, as well as dozens of cruise missiles and potentially ballistic missiles. The U.S. has urged Americans in Israel to restrict their movements ahead of a possible attack, which would be retaliation for Israel's deadly bombing of Iran's embassy in Syria early this month. Deborah Pata has more on fears of a wider war. Israel is braced for the worst-case scenario, the possibility of a direct attack on Israeli soil from Iran in retaliation for the bombing of its embassy in Damascus. Whoever harms us, we will harm them. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said at a military airbase, we are prepared, both defensively and offensively. Former Mossad official and Iran security expert Sima Shain says this is a dangerous moment for the region. Is this the most worried you've been? Yeah, I think this is the most worried. I think it's uh, on both sides, in Israel and in Iran. She says if Iran strikes Israel, it could involve missiles and drones similar to the Iranian attack on a Saudi oil facility in 2019. They will try to do it on a military or a military uh, asset. The question will be the damage, how many injured people are killed, and I think uh, it has the potential for a huge escalation. However, she stresses that she still believes neither side wants a regional conflict, and that will be weighing heavily on Iran's mind. Shine told us that Iran's major dilemma is how to respond in such a way that the conflict does not escalate further. And likewise, Israel, she says, may choose to show restraint and avoid further confrontation. Vlad, Anne-Marie? All right, Deborah, thank you. So for more on this, we are joined by Charles Faint. Charles is the uh, chair for the study of special operations and the deputy editorial director for the Modern War Institute at West Point. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, and so. Sure, to make it clear, uh, Iranian proxies have been attacking Israel for a while. The, the concern is that now Iran may overtly step into this. O o Iran itself may attack Israel itself. Can you tell us just how dangerous is this moment in the Middle East? Hey, Emery, thanks for having me on the show to talk about this very important topic. So I think this is a very dangerous time, not only for the region, but for the world. Tensions are at extreme high right now. The the move to strike the embassy annex of the Iranians was an extremely provocative move. So I think we can see any number of things happening in the very near future that have a uh, impact that might result in a regional conflagration, if not affect the entire world. So when you say any number of things, what might an Iranian attack look like? Well, Emory, I think we could see probably five potential courses of action. The first one, of course, there's always the course of action to, to do nothing. And to do nothing, I don't mean like the Iranians pretend that like this never happened. But for example, if there were a, a ceasefire in Gaza, they might declare victory with that, saying that they got what they wanted and, and are now going to take the higher road. I think it's more likely that there will be some type of kinetic action. For example, they might attack Israeli interests abroad. We see movement and reporting in the open source press about targeting of Israeli embassies, et cetera, overseas. We've, you mentioned the use of proxies. That would probably continue, especially with Hezbollah up to the north of Israel. The most dangerous thing is probably to attack Israel directly, which I expect we will see with drones and rockets and missiles. And then, of course, they might also attack the allies or, or interests worldwide. The most dangerous course of action is probably some type of combination of all of those. And I think that's what Israel and the world is bracing for the worst. Mm -hmm. And obviously, everyone is also concerned that there could be a miscalculation or a mistake when things are so tense. What are the options in terms of de-escalation? So it's hard right now to see what de-escalation would look like with the interests of so many powerful states being diametrically opposed. For example, Iran is committed to the destruction of Israel. Israel is committed to not being destroyed. Our, our president has made it very clear where the U.S. stands on this. So right now, I think we're seeing a rush for cooler heads to prevail in this, to prevent this from coming into a wider conflict that I think most of the major parties at this time don't want. Right. And uh, you mentioned uh, President Biden. Uh, while recently he's been particularly critical of Benjamin Netanyahu, he has al also reinforced the fact that U.S. support for Israel is ironclad. That is the word that he used. So then what would an Iranian attack mean for the U.S.? It would probably mean that the U.S. would 
uh, create a sanctioned regime to punish the Iranian government again. Of course, there'll be a lot of things going on behind the scenes that we're not aware of. But the most dangerous thing from American perspective is probably the introduction of U.S. boots on the ground or U.S. and, and Iran getting into direct military conflict. All right, uh, Charles Fate, the eyes of the world watching uh, this area of the world. Thank you so much. Thank you, Anne-Marie.